Defection to the Light. On the popular TV show America's Got Talent, you would hear Simon's critique of a contestant. You were pitchy on that chorus. Sometimes the audience would boo his comment because they liked the contestant's performance. Other times there was silence, confirming Simon's verdict, and the rest of the judging panel would usually agree. It was all high-stakes performance art for the performer and the viewing audience, and whichever contestant could whip up the biggest drama usually won the contest. To me, the show was a microcosm of the issues inherent in a universe of dualism. There is on-pitch, and there is off-pitch, or pitchy. The former describing a harmonious whole, the latter describing chaotic distraction. It's a metaphor for the priorities of Source Creator. The command, let there be light, is the genesis of harmony created out of the non-coherent void. Loving intent created the light, and that light created harmonics of experience, and as the Creator proclaimed, it is good. All of us know when something is off in our experience. It's an innate perception we all have to perceive harmony as desirable, and disharmony as undesirable. If you've ever been in a church choir or barbershop quartet, any pitchiness is immediately noticed and corrected. There is a natural groove within which harmony resides, and we all have the ability to hear it. Expand this idea to overall experience, and we see the existence of natural law, where certain creations produce pleasing harmonies and others produce unpleasant effects, And over time, those unpleasant effects are harmonized, just as singers monitor and correct their sounds to harmonize with the other instruments and singers in the performance. As Source created the world, it also created points of consciousness to experience the creation. Those points of consciousness were allowed to have the power of choice as to what creations they experienced. It fairly quickly became obvious that to choose the light and love path of harmony had definite restrictions as to what creations could be experienced. It then became possible to choose which was not harmonious. This unharmonized, lawless void seemed to allow more creative freedom without the restraints of natural harmonic law, sending the message of, Do what thou wilt, creation without apparent consequences, creation for the sake of creating, bringing the illusion of personal power and control. Thus, to certain creative consciousnesses, the world of loving harmony under natural law was a direct threat to their personal power and a constriction of freedom. Individual points of power emerged, creating more and more disharmony and chaos, replete with the fear and suffering this kind of disconnected creating brings into being. These disconnected points of creation produced the chaos of an orchestra of instruments all simultaneously playing a different song, and the fights began to see who could be the loudest and heard the most. The game became power and dominion over the participants in this dark drama. Who could create the greater effect on the most beings? Who could rise to power and dominion over the whole game? Meanwhile, within the world of light, love, and harmony, the Dark Lords continually attacked the light in efforts to gain dominion through chaos, with the propaganda of, Hey, see what power I have? You can also have your own power. Give up this light and love nonsense with all those rules and laws, and create whatever you want. For millions of years, there was a standoff between the forces of light and the forces of darkness. Until recently, something inevitable began to happen. Harmony and light began to expand into the darkness, because all the millennia of power-mongering, fighting, and controlling got some agents of darkness questioning their path. The constant struggle to maintain power, the constant fear of losing control, and the continual breaking of alliances led some to conclude that maybe joining the harmony of oneness wasn't such a bad idea. They soon discovered that, sure, living the law of self could result in the limited 
fleeting thrill of control and dominion, but it could also be quickly destroyed by any greater force of self, and the price for that was the never-ending agony of subjugation and loss. It could be seen that by embracing the light, one also embraced the oneness of connection with all other beings in the realm, instead of the conflict and chaos inherent in defending self against the onslaught of greed and lust for power on the dark side. Besides, choosing creations of light and love came with the automatic appreciation of all others within the oneness, much better. We now are seeing the entire matrix of darkness begin to disassemble with the defection of some choosing the light over the darkness, and some giving up the fight to be reabsorbed in the source. And just as the singer correcting their pitch to harmonize with the choir, these agents of the dark are choosing to join the harmony of the light, eternal love, peace without end. Soon, as the light triumphs, the darkness will be no more. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin. Brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy Rx. www.pureenergyrx.com.